Shalom. This is your Ak Yahawada. This is your Ak Kadash Alahayim. Khan, we just want to give all praise and honor to Yahweh by Shem Yahushai. We want to say Brakathah to Israel scattered across the four corners of the earth. Mm -hmm. um, today's message really is just endurance. You know what I mean? Because, you know, brothers might bring out the word and things like that, but we really go through it. You know what I'm saying? On a daily basis, whether it just be the society, or women at home, you know, just. The lot that the Lord has placed us in as far as Babylon the Great. You know what I'm saying? So brothers go through it. And I know a lot of other brothers you see on the you know on the screen, we all like we all got it together. Mm -hmm. But we be going through it. Con, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Con. We go through it. I want to start off real fast. And we just flowing off the spirit. Uh, I want to start off with Job. Job. Job one, yeah. Job one. So like you bear with me. Sound like a damn Christian pastor. Bear with me. <laughs> <laughs> there we go, right here. Con. Let me start off with Job 1 and 21. Con. And I'm going to say, um, the, the scriptures say, Salakia. And said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave. And the Lord had taken away, blessed be the name of the Lord. So I opened up with that precept, meaning, you know what I'm saying? No matter what happens, you accept and you endure the good and the bad. Because the yes, Lord sir. give and the Lord taketh away. You know what I'm saying? The Lord put you through that fiery furnace, but the Lord also purify you. Con, I'm going to jump back over to uh, verse 6. And it says, now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan came also among them and the Lord said unto Satan whence cometh thou then Satan answered the Lord or Yahweh mm -hmm. and said from going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it because we know Satan you know he looks for who he may devour you know what I'm saying whether it be based off your own sins and lusts and things of that nature right, right? and it said and Yahweh said unto Satan has thou considered my so servant Job? And we're Job, the elect. We're Job. You know what I'm saying? We're the. Have, the Lord is looking down upon us, asking, you know, Satan, have you considered my elect? Right. Right. And it says that there is none like him in the earth, and that's true. You know what I'm saying? This, the, this world was made for many, right? But the next world is going to be made for few. You know what I'm saying? So it's only a few, of, a remnant of us of Jacob that's keeping these laws, statutes, and commandments. Huh. Right, it says a perfect and upright man, and it, that just goes into being complete. You know, we acknowledge our sins, we might go off, but we repent from that. Right, that's being perfect, that's being upright, still striving for truth unto death. Right, right, right. One that fear of God and escheweth evil, and that's the elect. You know what I'm saying? That's what we do, right? On a daily basis, we try to get better and better at keeping the law, statutes, and commandment until Yahweh shall eventually return. Right, and it says, Then Satan answered. Lord and said, Do Job fear God for not? Meaning what? You know, he's asking, Do the do the elect fear the most high no matter what? Right? And it says, Has thou has not thou made an hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. So Satan, you know, he's being his he's doing his role. You know what I'm saying? He's tempted. He's asking the most high. They counseling. You know what I'm saying? He's like, well, what if you remove this, Yahweh? You know what I'm saying? Out of the elect's life. Will they still fear thee? Will they still worship thee unto death? Right? Come. And it says, uh, put, verse 11, but put forth thy hand now and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. So that's Satan, right? He tempted. Right? And it says, and the Lord, Yahweh, said unto Satan, behold, all that he had is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thy hand. So basically, I'm bringing this out just to say, you know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, we have to endure. You know what I mean? And the Most High, based on our own wicked thoughts and demons that we battle with, he's going to tempt you. Of course, well, the Lord don't tempt you, but you're Salakia. I mean, I want to phrase this right. Based on our own thoughts and our own wicked heart, the mm -hmm. Lord will give you trials and tribulations. So you can be purified and repent from your own evil way. You know what I mean? So that's really what I was going into. 
Con, and if I could say something real yeah. quick, um, when uh, how would it say endure? When you go into that word endure, it means to suffer patiently. Right. You know what I'm saying? So when you endure, it ain't just enduring. You know what I'm saying? You are suffering patiently right. on the second coming of our Lord, man, to be redeemed right. out of this out of this land of captivity, which is Babylon the Great. So right. we must endure patiently or suffer patiently during these during these tribulations, man. These last right. days, and, and a part of that, you know. It's being humble, being meek, you know what I'm saying? Being submissive to the to the Heavenly Father, you know, being submissive to these law, statutes, and commandments, man. You know, so when you go into that word endure, it means to suffer patiently. And that's what we must do in these last days. And let me jump to the book of um, Baruch. Uh, the book of Baruch, chapter 4. And I'm going to start at verse 29, and it reads... For deep for Salaki, for he that have brought these plagues upon you shall bring you everlasting joy again with your salvation. God. Right? So the Heavenly Father is the one that brings these plagues to you, these trials, these tribulations. Right. He the one that tests your spirit. You know what I'm saying? So when he brings these plagues uh to you, you know, in the end it's gonna be your salvation. Right. The same man that's bringing you these trial tribulations is the one that's going to deliver you, the one that's going to save you. Right. So always keep that in mind, man. That's that's a part of the test. Ah. You know, that's a part of the game plan is to afflict you with all type of troubles, you know, with all type of problems. You know what I'm saying? To see if you're going to be sound in the faith, you know, and, and if you're not sound in the faith and you fall back into the world. You know, then you truly wasn't a servant of the Most High. Right. You know what I'm saying? You, you truly wasn't part of the elect. You right. truly wasn't part of the one third because you backed out so easily. You gave up so easily. You know what I'm saying? We get present we get presented with all kinds of trials and tribulations on a daily basis. Right. Through our family, through our friends, through our loved ones, you know, through people of the world, through people at the job. Right. You know what I'm saying? Through the government. We get presented with all type of trials and tribulations in your walk. Uh -huh. But you must suffer patiently. I'm going to read that again. Um, Baruch chapter 4 and verse 29. For he that have brought these plagues upon you shall bring you everlasting joy again with your salvation, man. Uh. So the same, it's a, it's like a, um, it's like a, um, balance. it's a balance, you know right. what I'm saying? It's like a test. Right. It's like a test. The same one that's giving you the test, handing you the test, that's giving you these plagues, that's giving you these trials and tribulations, these afflictions, you know, that's the same one that's going to give you salvation, everlasting uh. joy. So keep that in mind, man. Uh, I want to bring out the book of Luke, chapter 14, and verse 26. Because uh, this is important. You know, Christ, he came to bring division. You know what I'm saying? We, as a people, we really, like, we really go through it, especially in our households. And these prophecies really do be fulfilled in a lot of our households. Uh, right? But I just want to bring this out. Luke 14, chapter 26. If any man come to me, and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yeah, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Now, is Christ saying actually hate your father and mother? No, because that would be against the commandment. Is Christ saying actually hate your wife? No, we know that, right? But he's just saying nothing usurps the most high. You know right. what I'm saying? So I know, you know, our wives, they might, you know, talk their little head, whatever, and they get out the spirit, whatever. We might get out the spirit. But at the end of the day, if your mind is on the Heavenly Father, He's going he gonna to help you endure. You know what I'm saying? He's going to put that spirit on you to, to get through whatever trial and tribulation you go through, whether it be from your mother, your father, your children, your brother, it don't matter. Right? Verse 27. And whosoever do not doeth not bear his cross and come after me cannot uh, be my disciple. You know what I'm saying? So we got to endure. We got to pick up this burden. Like we were talking yeah. about it earlier, the truth is not popular. You know what I'm saying? It's not, it doesn't look good in a wicked generation. You know, woe to them that put evil for good and good for evil. It don't look good. What we say, what the Most High say, what we bringing out being his angels, his messengers, is not always great for people's feelings in his life, right? To a wicked generation. But at the end of the day, we're going to keep doing the work of the Heavenly Father unto death. You know what I'm saying? And that's Lord willing, you know? Con, con. Um... Pull uh, Second Edges uh, fifteen and three real quick, uh, but I'm gonna bring out uh, First Peter chapter one, and I'm gonna start at verse five, and it reads, 
who are kept by the power of the Most High through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time, wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through many fold, through many fold temptations. And that word heaviness means stress, depression. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you want to get deeper, you know, it could be somebody having suicidal thoughts, somebody that's completely destroyed. You know what I'm saying? That's heaviness, that's completely worried. You know what I'm saying? Through many fold temptations. And we've been stressed out about all these temptations that we've been, been presented with. You know what I'm saying? We thinking about, you know, the money we made when we was in the world, right. you know, the women we was dealing with, you know what I'm saying? And like the cars, the luxury we right. had doing wicked, you know, that that's still tempt us in these last days, right. the men of the Lord. You know what I'm right. saying? It, it bring us stress because right. we know we could be prospering in this wicked society if we was wicked. Right. You know what I'm saying? So uh, verse seven, that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that, pre that perisheth. Though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearance of Hamashiach Yahweh. So that's why we must endure. That's why we must suffer patiently in these last days. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because we want to get that reward. Right. You know, seeing the coming of our Lord and Savior, man. We don't want to fall short and, and, and just give up. You know what I'm saying? We don't want to not suffer patiently. We don't want to be impatient. And give up the right. ghost quicker than what we got to. You know what I'm saying? We don't want to get put to death for transgressing, right. man. In these last days. Right? Bring out that um, second edges. What is it? What is it? Second uh, edges. 15 and 3. 15 and 3. Come on. It's the book of second edges, chapter 15 and verse 3. It says, fear not the imaginations against thee. Mm -hmm. Let not the incredulity of them trouble thee that speak against thee. Right. Fear not the imaginations against thee. And let not the un incredulity or the unbelief of them trouble thee, man. Right. Because a lot of people that you're around in these last days, they are conformed by this lawless system, by this beast right. system. You know what I'm saying? Don't fear the negative things that they put into your imagination, man. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you you serving the Most High? Oh, you don't you don't um you don't um party on Saturday on Friday nights? Right. You know what I'm saying? You don't go out to the bar and get drunk? No, I can't spend no money. Man, you whack, man. Right. You ain't used to be like that. Right. You know what I'm saying? You used to be live. You used to be turned up. You used to be right. lit. You know, don't fear those imaginations that people send against you, man. Don't let their unbelief trouble you. Because right. you know your reward is great in the end, man. Right. right? So jumping back to 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 8, it said, Whom have whom having not seen, ye love. And whom though now ye see him not, yet believing ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory receiving the end of your faith even the salvation of your souls man so we we believe in him we believe in christ and we haven't seen christ right you know what i'm saying that that takes a lot of faith right right and then once we do see him once we do meet christ and see christ lord willing that's gonna be some unspeakable joy we ain't right. we gonna be speechless it ain't gonna be nothing to say right you know, it's gonna be like we gasping for air when we when we see our Lord, man. Right. Trying to breathe. Right. That's the end of our faith. We don't have right. to have no more faith after that. Right. That's what goal we trying to accomplish in these last days is to reach that level when we meet our Lord and Savior. It's gonna be the end of our faith. We're not going our faith gonna be confirmed. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna be confirmed and we're not gonna need faith no more. Uh -huh. That's what we're trying to graduate to. Right. You know what I'm saying? Uh verse nine, it says Verse 9 again, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. Um, That's why we must endure, man. That's the importance of endurance, man. Right. You got it up. Come on. It's the book of Zechariah, chapter 13. And I'm going to start at verse 8. Mm -hmm. It says, and it shall come to pass that in all the land, said the Lord, Yahweh, mm -hmm. two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein. Verse 9, this is the point. And I will bring the third part through the fire and will refine them as silver is refined and will try them as gold is tried. You That's know, right. so we've been purified. You know what I'm saying? We try and we enduring these trials and tribulations and Lord willing, we keep enduring because we don't know what's going to happen at the right. end of the day. I mean, we got prophecy, but ultimately, you know, the the very minute parts of it, we don't know. You know what I'm saying? The Lord could flip your whole life upside down immediately. 
You know what I mean? And it says, um, continuing in verse 9, they shall call on my name and I will hear them. I will say, it is my people. And they shall say, the Lord is my God. You know, and that's going into what the brother was bringing out. You know what I'm saying? Our faith is going to be confirmed. Mm -hmm. You know, right now, the Most High, he does, he does do a lot of little miracles. You know what I'm saying? But the ultimate miracle now is to see, you know, the fall of this wicked society and this wicked kingdom and to be saved out of this. You know what I'm saying? Out of this oppression, out of this darkness, out of this deceit, out of the lies. You know, and that that's a that's a glorious thing. Like the brother said, our faith is gonna be confirmed. You know, mm -hmm. the, and you know, the most high don't put nothing on you you cannot bear. You know what I'm saying? He's not gonna do that. He knows you, he created you. You know, he knows what you can endure. And he gonna hit you though, each individual individual where it hurts, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, to get yourself together. Because you have to come out as pure gold. You have to be refined, you know what I'm saying? Because a lot of us are impure. Meaning our impurities, our sins, the way we were brought up in Babylon has really made us and shaped us to who we are. But now we have to be renewed. You know what I'm saying? We have to be refined. We have to be retaught. And we still learn it every day. This is a continual walk, enduring. You know what I'm saying? You got to endure. It's a marathon. It's not a sprint. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's really, if you really want the kingdom, you really got to gut yourself out. Because ultimately, this triumphs how you feel. I could want to go off and be evil and be prideful, but guess what? The counsel of the Lord is going to always stand that's if you're right. really in the spirit. That's you can right. have an evil thought, but that precept pop in your mind, oh, that's wicked. I can't do that. That's right. That's evil. I can't do that. Damn. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to beat somebody up. I can't do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? My wife, she, oh, she may want to choke her out, right? Right. You can't do that. Right? right? You can't be that roaring lion. You know what I'm saying? So, but, you know. At the same time, you be wise in every situation. You know, you got to be wise. You got to use wisdom, especially during this time. Because, like I said, I know a lot of brothers go through it in a household, especially younger brothers. You know what I'm saying? We are ribs and stuff like that. It'd be hard, man. It's hard to. And I've heard this from elders and every. It's even hard for them. People that's been the truth 20, 30 years. It's even hard for them. You know what I'm saying? Brothers really do catch hell. You know what I'm saying? So right. this this walk is not easy, but Lord willing, we're going to keep enduring. Car. And it ain't popular either, man. Right. And you know, uh, with that being said, you know, the dragon is angry. You right. know what I'm saying? He making war with the saints of the Most High. Right. You know, you trying to live righteously. You know what I'm saying? You trying to live according to the scriptures and walk according to the ordinance of the Most High. Right. You know, Satan gonna come down with great wrath on you, man. Right. You know, if and if you you're not getting uh, came down on with great wrath, you know, if you're not being afflicted or tormented. Or going through trials and tribulations, the most high really not dealing with you. Right. You know what I'm saying? He really not dealing with you. Because he say through much tribulation, we enter into the kingdom of the most high. Right. Through much tribulation. Right. Not a small amount of tribulation, not a little bit here and there. Through much tribulation, we enter into the kingdom of the most high. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? So we gotta be uh circumspect about that. Right? So this um Revelation chapter 12 and verse 17, and it reads. And the dragon was wroth. Wroth means angry. Right. With the woman and went to make war with the raiment, with the remnant of her seed, uh. which keep the commandments of the Most High and have the testimony of Hamashiach Yehawashah. Uh. Right? So the, so the dragon, you know, the serpent Esau, you know, is angry with Israel or Jerusalem and making war with her seed, the children of Israel. Uh. You know what I'm saying? Because we are keeping the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High to the best of our ability Right. in these last days. It, it ain't too many people in Babylon the Great that's following the words of these scriptures. Right. It's a very few. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like like the brother said, this walk is not popular, man. Right. It's not popular at all. We outcast to society. Right. You don't celebrate Christmas. You don't celebrate these pagan traditions. Right. You keeping the Shabbat. You keeping the high holy days. It look crazy to people, you know, when you tell them, oh, it's new moon tonight. I'm finna go turn up. Right. What? What's that? What's new moon? Right. That's a club or something? Right, exactly. In Tallahassee, Florida, they got a club called The Moon. You know right. what I'm saying? They it's probably, a hookah it, lounge. It's a hookah right. lounge. <laughs> right, right. Talking about something. Oh, you going to the club? Right, no, right. it's the new moon. We keeping the high holy day of the Heavenly Father. Right. It looks strange to outsiders, man, who haven't came into the knowledge that it's truth. Right. You know, so if you are keeping the law, statutes, and commandments, prepare your soul for temptation. Prepare to be tried 
as gold is tried in the fire, man, because the serpent is making war with those that has the testimony of Kamashi Akihawashi to have the prophecies. Right. You know? Tom, it's the book of Acts, chapter 14, verse 22. So let me back off the brother. It says, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in faith and that we must, through much tribulation, mm -hmm. enter into the kingdom of God. You know what I'm saying? Okay. It's just enduring. You know, that's kind of just the message. You know, it's, it's a lot that goes on. It's a lot of temptations, you know, but you got to walk that straight and narrow path, man. And it's, it's easier said than done. You know what I'm saying? But if you got the right spirit, you can do it. Because guess what? Through Christ, you can do anything. You can do all things through Christ who strengthen you. You know what I'm saying? Or strengthen me. Or strengthen him. Okay. You know what I mean? We can do all things. So if you got the right spirit of a Mashiach, you can you can endure anything. And you got to think, Christ, well, he, he died. Mm -hmm. He died. That means you can endure all things. You know what I'm saying? What is death ultimately? If you know that the ultimate, the most high made you and you had that much faith in the Lord, death is nothing. It's nothing. There, there's nothing on the earth that can conquer you, right? It says ye are gods, but we die like men. Right. And he, what he say? The, uh, it's better for one's death than the one's birth. Right. You know? Right. That's true. That is what the scriptures say. Say better than better is the end thereof than the beginning. Because <laughs> when you when you go back up and come back down, boy, you gonna gotta go through hell again if we still here. You know what I'm Come saying? On. It's like, oh, God. I know we probably be in the spirit realm, like, oh no, you right, know what I mean? right. I gotta go back again for real. Through the regeneration. Ah, oh. mm -hmm. I, I don't want to go. Right. I don't want to go. Right, because we we earthly. We see earthly things. You know what I'm saying? We still made after that first Adam. So to us. You know, death, it, it might look sketch, you know what I'm saying? But having the spirit and learning and understanding how death works, then we see, you know, through the light, what it really is. You know what I'm saying? You can conquer all things in righteousness, right? In righteousness. <laughs> right. That's right. You know, because our spirits go back to the spirit world. Right. And at the same time, you know, when Christ, when Christ died on the cross, man, he popped right back up on his right. disciples. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He popped right back up. <laughs> Like, hey, y'all be me over here. You right, know what I'm saying? Right. He popped right back up, man. Right. So that give us hope as well, man. Right. You know, we're going to be resurrected with our Lord right. in these last days, man. Huh. Right? So let me get the book of um, 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 3. And it reads, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine mm. they go that word endure again right. patiently suffer to suffer patiently sound doctrine but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears and they shall turn away their ears from the truth meaning from the law or from christ right and shall be turned unto fables you right. know what i'm saying and that's that's part of you not enduring in these last days because you're not enduring sound doctrine you know what I'm saying? You right. getting carried to and fro by every wind of doctrine. Every new doctrine that get presented to you, you want it. Right. You in deep thought, meditating and thinking about it. Right. Instead of being rooted in this word, man. Instead of being rooted in these law, statutes, and commandments. Right. You don't want to hear the law no more. You want to hear that the law is done away with. Right. You know what I'm saying? That Christ came right. and done away with the law. You're not, endure now you're not enduring sound doctrine no more. Right. You want to say Christ's law. What is Christ's law? The law of Christ. Right. No, no, no. <laughs> What is Christ, that? Christ said um, his doctrine is not his. Man. Right. He said my doctrine is not mine. Right. And we all know the doctrine of life. Right. And we all know the doctrine of Christ. Right. You know what I'm saying? But it's going to come a time where those that not going to endure, that's going to fall out the truth, they're not going to endure sound doctrine, right. man. Right. You know? Taking heed to fables. So you got to get your strength up, man. You got to get rooted in this word. A lot of people in this truth, man, they not rooted. Right. You know, they in it for the wrong reasons. And that's how you get sifted out. You know, that's how you get sifted out because you rooted on another man's foundation right. or you rooted on um, the the music, the the selling of Israelite merchandise right. or whatever the case may be. You just not rooted. It's a right. fad to you. Right. You know what I'm saying? You're not really you didn't really have an awakening. Right. You just following the crowd. You know right. what I'm saying? Not saying that this the wrong crowd to follow. You want to follow this crowd. but. Right. You got to be rooted, man, or you're going right. to get swayed to and fro with different doctrines. Right. A brother going to be able to come up to you and, and, and 
and persuade you. Fast. You know what I'm saying? Right. Lead you to the pit real quick. Right. This right. the law of Christ, brother. Right. What is that? You know what I'm saying? Come. Um, <laughs> damn Christians. Right, right. You know? But even brothers in the truth. Right. I've seen some prominent brothers mm -hmm. seep in talking about the law of Christ, brother. Whoa. Whoa, right. whoa, 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 whoa. We got to take it back. You know what I'm saying? The Lord don't change. Right. But let's continue with the message. Con. This is a uh, book of Matthew chapter 10. And I'm going to just start at verse 16. Right. And it says, Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to councils. And they will scourge you in their synagogues. And that's important because... You know, councils could be in the police. That could be a that could be a form of a synagogue. You know what I'm saying? They could take you to the judge. That's a council. You know what I'm saying? Or or a type of synagogue as well. You know what I'm saying? Men will deliver you up, right? And that could be your your wife, whoever, your brother, right? For righteousness' sake, though, right? And it says, and you shall be brought before governors. That could be your judges, right? And kings mm -hmm. for my sake. For a testimony against them right. and the Gentiles. See, and that's important because sometimes we go through that fiery trial. We may not understand, but during our fiery trial, we impact other people's lives mm -hmm. by what? Still giving brothers and sisters the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. You know what I'm saying? If I get locked up, Lord willing, I don't. You know, I never want to get locked up, but let's just use it as an example, right? The, the most high might put you in there just to deliver souls. You know what I'm saying? That could be his purpose. It's always his will. So you will be, you know, put before governors and kings for his name's sake. You know what I'm saying? For example, we was talking to, you know, Esau's army earlier, which is the police, right? We was talking to them earlier. Well, I wasn't, but the brother was. And, you know, they was questioning the brother like, yo, you know, what does all this mean? And he was that light. You know, he was that thing to the Gentiles. You know what I'm saying? He was confessing. He was showing them the truth. And the laws and statutes and commandments and the spirit. And they was confounded. You know what I'm saying? Like, whoa. Come on. Whoa. That's crazy. But the truth cannot be denied. No matter where you at. The truth can't be denied. Come on. Verse uh, 19. But when they delivered you up, take no thought. The brother didn't take no thought. You know what I'm saying? We just chilling. Police pull up behind us. We ain't, we ain't thinking nothing of it. We just right. like, what the hell? Right, <laughs> You know right. what I'm saying? The brethren have no thought. But guess what? The Most High gave them the spirit, and our enemies were at peace with us, right? Come And it says, how or what you shall speak, for it shall be given you in that same hour where you shall speak. And that's what happened to the brother, right? I'm a, I'm a witness. I'm a witness, right? Come. The word is a witness, and I'm a witness, right? Come It says, for it is not ye that speak, but the spirit of your father which speaketh in you and that and it's crazy because we don't know what esau was trying to do to us ultimately he could have tried to arrest us or anything you know what i'm saying but the brother had the right spirit the right zeal he agreed with his adversary quickly most high put the words in his mouth then they start asking then they, they start asking us what do, what can we do for y'all right, Shit, right go make me a sandwich <laughs> right. Shit, that's what you can do Shit, go give me a sandwich right yeah that was surprising I, right that was surprising but ver i'm getting to the point verse 21 22 it says and the brother shall deliver up the brother to death and the father the child and the children shall rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death and ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake because the truth is not popular we tell you hey you can't be a homosexual there's no pedophiles in Israel, right? It's it's a lot of you can't rape nobody, right? You can't walk around here with your ass out. See, all that right. stuff is not popular. Excuse my language, you know, but that stuff is not popular. If I tell a woman, hey, don't get out of order, that's not popular in this generation because of feminism and different things and it and a so-called white man exalting the women in certain aspects, right? So it, you know, it's a struggle in the household. You got a woman thinking she a man. That's not it, right? And it says, but he that endureth to the end shall be saved. That's you know right. What I'm saying? So that's right. You still got to endure. You can go through all these trials and tribulations, whatever, but you still got to endure, you know, ultimately because we want a great reward. You know, we want our work to be, we want our fruit to be prosperous. We want to be that good tree. You know what I'm saying? We want to have that single eye, that single mind, that righteous mind, that righteous eye. You know what I'm saying? And put our pride to the side because... It's a lot of situations where brothers easily can get prideful, easily can go really far right or far left, right? Mm -hmm. Easily. But through the spirit and the counsel of the Lord and making this your foundation, 
the Most High have mercy on you and deal with you. Because at a time, I might not have been able to, you know, endure certain things in my walk. I might be quick to snap or quick, but now, you know, through patience, it's, endure, it's really enduring. You learn from situations, you get better at the situation. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? You repent from the evil that has caused that situation. So that way, if the situation do come up again, it might be hot, but it's not evil. You know what I'm saying? It's no judgment being passed. There's no sin being committed. So it can be controlled. You know what I mean? Kind, kind. Like, like the brother said, man, those that endure to the end shall be saved. You know, you got to suffer patiently until the end. And then that word endure again, you know, you must endure sound doctrine. Right. You must endure the sound doctrine. Right. You can't get swayed to and fro because a lot of people that fall out the truth, they have itching ears and they go with a different doctrine. Right. At the end of the day. Uh, it's unlawful for a man to have multiple wives. Hey, the, the scripts don't say that. Right. You know, it might not be expedient for right. some brothers, but it's, it's definitely not unlawful. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's people be making up their own doctrines. They create right. their own doctrines within, within the word, man. Right. That's why you got to go precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little. Because uh -huh. people don't endure sound doctrine. So therefore, they get tossed out the truth. They right. get sifted out, man. Right. And that's all a part, in, part of enduring to the end, man. Right. That's enduring these doctrines, man. You got to right. endure the sound doctrine. Uh -huh. Right. So let me get the book of Wisdom of Solomon. Chapter 3 and verse 9, and it reads, They that put their trust in him shall understand the truth. What is the truth? The law, the truth is Christ. Right. You know what I'm saying? It ain't no way around it. The truth is the law, and the truth is Christ, right? Uh. So he said, They that put their trust in him shall understand the truth, and such as be faithful in love shall abide with him. For grace and mercy is to his saints. And he have care for his elect. Uh, so grace and mercy is with the saints of the Most High, man. And you could uh, tell if you're a saint of the Most High by all the grace and mercy that he show you, man. Right. You know the grace and mercy he show you on a daily basis. Right. You know it. Right. If you ain't getting no mercy or no grace, man, he probably not dealing with you. Right. You know you probably not a saint of the Most High. Right. You probably not a part of the hopeful elect. Right. You know? He chastised those he loved, man. Right. He just want to see if you're going to make it out. Right. He want to see if you still on his team or not, man. Right. Or if you're going to infiltrate and be a, a snitch, a perpetrator. Right. You know what I'm saying? What they right. call it, a mole, right. an inside man, an agent. He a just want to see if you're going to be a rat, man. Right. If you're going to switch sides, man. Right. If you're going to play monkey in the middle all day. Right. With him and Shatan, you're going to play monkey in the middle all day. Right. You know? The Lord just want to see your, your, your uh, efforts, man. Right. He tried a heart. You know, he tried to rise, he tried to heart, man, the intents of the heart. That's what he looking at. He put he put a trial or a situation to you. He want to see the intents of your heart, man. God. You know, so we got to endure. We got to endure. Uh, verse 10, Wisdom of Solomon chapter 3, verse 10. But the ungodly shall be punished according to their own imaginations, right. which have neglected the righteous and forsaken the Lord, man. The righteous, I mean, the ungodly shall be punished according to their own imaginations. So all those evil, wicked thoughts that you have in your mind, you're going to be punished according to those thoughts and imaginations, man. Right? You know, that's how the Lord works. He's going he gonna to deliver you over to your own destruction. Right. He take the wise in their own craftiness, man. You thinking foolish thoughts, he's going to hand you over to that. Right. Right. That's how the ungodly going to be punished. And he says, um, which have neglected the righteous... And forsaken the Lord, forsaken Christ, forsaken the Bible, forsaken the Holy Covenant, man. Right. You know, so we got to endure. We got to endure. We must endure until the end, man. Then we will be saved. Right. Don't let these Christians fool you and talk about they saved already. We in the new covenant. We in the new covenant. We saved. That's it. You know what I'm saying? No, no, Ooh. no. Your work is your faith, man. Right. You know? And they ain't putting in no type of work. Right. All right? God. Yeah, I'm gonna jump down to Wisdom of Solomon uh, 3 and 17. And it reads, For though they live long, yet shall they be nothing regarded, and their last age shall be without honor to those that, that's not gonna endure. Right. You know what I'm saying? Those that's eating pork, being an adulterer, breaking the law, statutes, and commandments of the Heavenly Father. Right. You know what I'm saying? 
those are the ones that's going when they get up in age they def, they ain't gonna have no honor in that man right. they're not gonna be honored in that they it say at their last age shall be without honor verse 18 or if they die quickly they have no hope neither comfort in the day of trial mm. in the day of day test they're not gonna have no comfort unlike us even when we been in the fight in the fire man getting tried we still have a little bit of comfort that the right. most high give us because right. we know it's him doing it to right, us right right you know what i'm saying we have a, we have that comfort but the wicked not gonna have that comfort right. the ungodly those walking contrary to the law statutes and commandments right. they're not gonna have that comfort right in verse 19 for horrible is the end of the unrighteous generation mm. horrible horrific terrifying right you know what i'm saying unable to bear is the end of the unrighteous generation, man. So repent, keep these law statutes and commandments, endure to the end, man. Calm. And I'm gonna close it out with, uh, unless you got some more stuff. Yeah, you can close it out. Calm. This is Ecclesiastes mm -hmm. 12 and 13. <laughs> Bring it, it out, says, Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Mm -hmm. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Verse 14, though, is important, right? It says, for God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. You know what I'm saying? Because ultimately, the Most High still control all things. Somebody might think they're trying to pass or mess you up or mess up your day or mess up your life, but the Lord would flip that judgment right upon their own head. You know what I'm huh. saying? Because you can't, you can't play with the, the prophets of the Most High. You know what I'm saying? You can't play with the elect of the Most High in general. You know what I mean? So, you know, this walk, it gets fiery, but, you know, the Most High ultimately is going to be the man who got the final say over anything. You know what I'm saying? And everything. So, huh. Huh. With that being said, we'd like to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shah, Barakatha. It's H O Y Las Vegas. Huh. It's H O Y to the Cherries Fly. Huh. Shalom, Yasharala. Shalom.